Well, it certainly starts like a standard rifle. Too big for 5.56. This is 308. A2 style handguards. Flat top. The MMP 10 from Smith & Wesson Sport with fully ambidextrous controls. I'm pretty excited about giving this a try. You don't see many Smith & Wessons on our channel. That's what's coming up next on GB Guns. So, MMP 10 Sport. Not the super exciting as far as what uh, the basic build is like, but I tell you what gets me really excited about it is this fully ambidextrous controls. Mostly being able to have the bolt catch and release on this side. And yes, there you go, everything's on that side as well. So mag release is an easy thing for left-handers. Speaking of mags, it did include a 20 round P mag. Also included our manual to take a look at that is tricolor with plenty of explanation in it. Registration card and a catalog from Battenfield Technologies. This is the mother family, by the way, of uh, Smith & Wesson and just about everybody else. You've seen us use a lot of Caldwell stuff. They make some great things. I thought it was interesting that they uh, hit you right off the bat with more things that you can get from the same family of brands. There's the big pile of them down there. But good folks and American. So the rifle itself. I'm going to separate the upper from the lower to make it a little easier to get everything on camera. Seems like a very tight fit. <laughs> I'm going to need to whack those out with a mallet real quick and then I'll line them back. It uh, most certainly took some whacking um, to get it apart and for those of you who don't know it, that's actually a good thing. That means that the upper and lower have a snug fit and that feeding will happen reliably as well as when this rocks between shots, at least it won't rock as much and you're going to have more consistency in your shots. So taking a look at our lower. Small bit of a flare there, a little bit of texturing on the front. I like that it has the more simple sort of GI look to it, but obviously with everything being ambidextrous it's not just GI. Pistol grip doesn't quite fit so well, but you know what? This is one of those things we change out anyways. Smith & Wesson branded M4 style multi-position buttstock. Flip it around. Kind of busy over here, but I like that they were able to pull that off. Of course, the trigger guard is integrated. And the trigger, let me get this out of the way. Fairly smooth. Don't know who makes it, probably their own, but uh, feels rather nice. Definite clean machining in there. And this whole ambi thing, I'm still excited about it. It's just great to have everything there. Take a look at our upper. We've got an A2 style flash hider slash compensator in that uh, since it's not poured on the bottom, it'll push down a little bit and hopefully help mitigate against muzzle rise. Gas block is way up front and railed for iron sights if you'd like. It's a bit large compared to contemporary styling, but I'm okay with that. I like the A2 style plastic handguards. Hopefully there is a heat shield in there. Oh, that's snug. We'll find out when we get it hot. These are generally billet. It's put together so nicely that it looks almost cast. All right, get our bolt out. Look at that different color inside. It's actually gray in there. It's interesting. As are these marks here. That might be part of what helps tension the uh, fit. There's two little pads in the back too. So certainly more than meets the eye on uh, what you first see. 
you're looking at it as with the bolt big old beefy 308 that's a meaty gun so I'm excited to get this out and give it a whirl well of course to see what kind of accuracy we can get at 100 yards with it but it's not built as a at least appearance wise it's not built and marketed like your big kind of sniper gun it's set up more uh, as a fighting gun like a battle rifle like the original AR-10 concept was meant to be so we'll run some military surplus ammo through it all the way up through some match grade ammo and see what kind of performance we get out of it I'd like to hear your thoughts AR-10s are usually more expensive not just to feed, but also to acquire. Um, so there are fewer people out there owning them, and certainly a lot more people, uh, a lot more research done before buying. So what are your thoughts on this one, seeing it here? Does this look like something that you'd want to venture into because it's more similar to a classic AR? Or because it's got the ambidextrous side? Let me know what your thoughts are on this guy.